It's been called molecular scissors, if you will. What is CRISPR and what can it do? CRISPR is in fact a system in bacteria that detects and cuts virus genetic material, whether it's DNA or RNA. And it was by studying how that actually works, and we did this in collaboration with Emmanuel Charpentier's lab um, to study the function of a protein known as CRISPR-Cas9. That line of research led to an understanding of the function of this molecule that allowed us to harness it as a tool for genetic manipulation, namely for altering DNA sequences in any cell in a precise fashion, in a programmable fashion that gives scientists now a very powerful way to understand the function of genes, but importantly also to change the function of genes in a, a targeted way. The pace of CRISPR research, the application has been startling. It's been incredible to watch. What are the current use cases that inspire you the most? Well, I always think about Victoria Gray, who was the first patient with sickle cell disease to be treated with CRISPR here in the US. Her story is so inspiring. I mean, you know, she is somebody who is benefiting right now from the CRISPR technology to be able to live a normal life without uh, being impacted by uh, an otherwise quite devastating genetic disease. And other patients are, in, are similarly uh, being impacted by the CRISPR technology. So I think that's one area where we're, we'll see increasing developments, uh, more and more clinical trials that are starting. In fact, at the Innovative Genomics Institute that I started a few years ago uh, here in the Bay Area, we have just received approval from the Food and Drug Administration for our own inve investigational new drug or IND uh, trial for sickle cell disease. So, you know, this is really an extraordinary moment, I think, in, in terms of thinking about cures for genetic disorders. Back in the 70s, test tube babies were controversial, and now IVF is widely acceptable, accepted, available. Do you think it will be the same with CRISPR-edited babies? Over the coming decades, I think sure. I think absolutely, you know, that because this is what happens, isn't it? Is that, you know, people um, get comfortable with an idea if it's useful, you know, if it is proven. And, and this is, you know, this is still remains to be seen. Like if, if CRISPR proves to be useful um, and, 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 you know, kind of controllable in human embryos, and that is still in the realm of research. But if that were to happen, then, uh, you know, I think it becomes a possibility that in vitro fertilization clinics offer that to their uh, clients. And, and so then, you know, who, who should make that decision? Should governments uh, be regulating that? Well, that doesn't actually doesn't really happen for IVF clinics right now. In fact, you know, there's, as you probably know, there's, you know, different, different regulations across different states in the US and of course in different countries is different. And so I think, you know, the same thing could possibly happen with CRISPR where, you know, it becomes a, uh, something that, you know, some clinics offer it and, and parents will have to decide, do I want to do that or not?